Hey guys, Curly Susie here from Cape Breton, Nova Scotia. In today's video, we're gonna talk about hair type, hair porosity, and I'm gonna run through some of those ingredients that you often find in your curly hair products. Um, we're not gonna talk so much about silicone and sulfate because I talk about that a lot in my videos. We're gonna talk about the other stuff like alcohol, glycerin, propylene glycol, and mineral oil. Yeah. Before I talk about hair type, I just want to talk about why I don't typically talk about hair type in my videos. Basically, hair typing is just a system that was created in order to put your hair into a category. Basically, it was a system created by stylists, for stylists and their clients in order to have like a common ground and a common way that they could discuss their hair pattern. So I'm going to get right into it. If you have type one hair, you have straight hair, pretty straightforward. If you have type two hair, you have wavy hair. This hair is generally in an S shape. It can be tight or loose, but it is relatively two dimension. If you have type three hair, you have curly hair. And this hair is in more of a corkscrew shape. If you have type four hair, you have what is called coily or kinky hair. Now this hair is very similar to curly hair, um, only instead of having a corkscrew shape, it has more of a Z pattern or an S shape. It is, however, three dimensional. Type four hair is often associated with afros or very extremely tight, coily, curly hair. So we know what type one, two, three, and four are. So what is the A, B, C? The A, the B, and the C, it's basically just an extra way to separate each one of the hair types into how tight the pattern is. So if you have wavy hair, you can have type 2A, type 2B, type 2C hair, and it's basically describing how tight the waves are. I'm gonna go into this a little bit further, and in order to really help you guys understand the difference between the A's and the B's and the C's, I'm gonna show you some stock photos that I just found on the internet. Um, these are photos of celebrities and just random curly-haired people that I got when I Googled uh, type 2A hair, for example. And so, who knows, your picture might even pop up here. Creepy, hey. Before I move on from hair typing, there's one thing that I will say. If your hair is chemical damaged, heat damaged, it is very likely that your hair is not able to find its natural hair pattern. And so you may have hair that looks like it's only a type two hair, but it may in fact be type three hair. And this becomes extremely evident to me the healthier my hair gets. So when I first started at the Curly Girl Method, my hair was definitely a type three. I knew that I had curly hair, um, but most of it wouldn't curl completely. And so some of the regrowth of my hair looked like this, like a curl. And then the bottom portion of my hair, because it was so damaged, it kind of looked like this. And so this is what my hair looked like. And so you have an option if this is your hair. You can either be extremely patient, use products, and try to coax this section of your hair to curl as much as possible as it grows out and you gradually trim some off. Or you may choose to trim off all of the hair that won't curl. And that's what people call the big chop. This is the easiest way to get your healthy hair as quickly as possible but some of us are not willing to get rid of our length. All right, that's hair typing. Let's talk about something that I do find very important and that is hair porosity. The best way for me to describe hair porosity to you is by showing you some close-up diagrams of the actual hair cuticle. One thing that I do really find helpful when choosing your hair products is knowing your hair porosity. Hair is generally low porosity, normal porosity, or high porosity. So what does that mean? Have a look at the picture on your screen. 
This is a picture of an individual hair magnified thousands and thousands of times. So in low porosity hair, the cuticles on the hair, which are kind of like fish scales, they lay very, very flat, and therefore it is difficult for that strand of hair to absorb moisture and products. The benefit of having low porosity hair is that because the cuticle is flat, light reflects off the hair a lot easier, and low porosity hair generally looks healthier and more shiny. Normal porosity hair is somewhere in the middle, but I'm going to talk about high porosity hair. So myself and a lot of you, we have high porosity hair. So the cuticle or the fish scales are all raised and that makes the hair very porous, hence the name. And so moisture and products get absorbed into the hair shaft very easily, but they also leave the hair shaft very easily. Um, and so one of the other problems with high porosity hair is that because light doesn't reflect off the strands of hair as well, the hair does appear to be more dull and less healthy looking. So we got hair type and hair porosity out of the way. I'm going to take the next few minutes and go through alcohols, glycerin, propylene glycol, and mineral oil. Alright guys, I'm about to get right scientifical. The first thing I'm going to talk about is alcohol. And just so you guys know, most of my information came from online sources, mainly naturallycurly.com. So when it comes to alcohols, you have to know that not all alcohols are created equally, and so there are drying alcohols and conditioning alcohols. This can be extremely confusing. You want to avoid drying alcohols, but conditioning alcohols are actually good for your hair, and they are found in Curly Girl approved products. Basically, if you see alcohol on the back of a bottle, I would just Google it and find out if it is a drying alcohol or a conditioning alcohol. Um, Ceteryl alcohol and cetyl alcohol are two of the most common fatty or conditioning alcohols found in hair products. They are both Curly Girl approved. The thing that is the most confusing to me is that you will have products that are apparently Curly Girl approved that say no alcohol on the front of the bottle and then on the back it'll say ceteryl alcohol or sterile alcohol and you're like hey I thought that was alcohol free but basically if something says that it's alcohol free it means that it's free from drying alcohols alright so the next thing we're going to talk about is glycerin glycerin or glycerol is an ingredient that is found in a lot of curly hair products basically glycerin or glycerol is a humectant much like the conditioning alcohols it does draw moisture into the hair and retain moisture. And so the problem that some curly girls have with glycerin is that in very humid weather, sometimes the hair will absorb too much moisture and they end up with frizzier, fluffier hair than they wanted. Um, so a lot of curly girls actually choose to use glycerin in colder weather and then refrain from using glycerin in humid weather. The products that I have that contain glycerin, the glycerin is probably one of the last two ingredients and so, so far I haven't really had a problem using these products in humid weather but again, you guys are going to have to use some trial and error, but just know that if you're out in humid weather and your hair is frizzy, glycerin may be one of the problems. The next ingredient is propylene glycol. And before doing a little bit of research, aka internet research, um, I thought for sure that this one was going to be extremely bad for your hair, and that is due to the propaganda surrounding propylene glycol. So a lot of companies actually stopped using it in their products, but the main reason that they stopped was because propylene glycol is sometimes associated with antifreeze. And so there was a lot of buzz around this chemical, which is actually an organic compound, um, basically saying that it was harmful and toxic and that it should not be used. Propylene glycol is actually approved to be safe to be put in food products and it is non-carcinogenic. The reason that propylene glycol is good is that it is, again, a very effective humectant. And so if you're not going to be using silicone in your products, um, you need to put things in your products that retain moisture and moisturize the hair. And so that is why propylene glycol is used. I just recently read an article on naturallycurly.com. It was written by a chemist who actually happens to be a curly girl. And she said that it is a perfectly safe product to use and that she would continue to use propylene glycol in her hair products.
Okay, so last on the list is mineral oil, and to my surprise, this was the ingredient that gave me the most grief. And I'm very guilty of using products that have mineral oil, oil in them. The problem is, is that there is actual scientific research out there that says that while mineral oil isn't generally hazardous for your health, it's not toxic or poisonous, it does have negative effects on the skin and the hair follicle. And so I just am now choosing to avoid mineral oil. If any of you guys have more information about mineral oil or if you're using products that contain mineral oil, please leave information in the comments section below. But anyway, that's all I'm going to say about the ingredients. Let's wrap it up. I hope you liked this video. I hope it was helpful. Give it a big thumbs up if you liked it and you can give it a big thumbs down if you didn't like it. Leave any questions or comments that you have in the comment section below. Subscribe to my channel and I will see you next Wednesday and every Wednesday for more curly hair content. Bye.